All right, so apparently uh, Zendaya and Tom Holland have uh, come out as a couple on a red carpet. This is a big deal in Hollywood. First of all, I don't even believe any of these relationships. Everything in Hollywood is bullshit. I once, when I was on the hills and had a little bit of heat, if you will, I remember a publicist reached out to me about setting up a fake relationship with this actress. I don't even know who she was, but I, I don't trust anything. Uh, and... I don't think they're really dating. And if they are, cool, great. I mean, but it's so boring that the lead actor in a movie is going out with the lead actress. Like, big deal. These Both of these people can get anybody they want. So am I supposed to? I don't know. People get excited about couples. I don't get excited. I don't care. It doesn't do anything for me. I want to see the movie. But do I care if they're a couple in real life? Do I care if they break up? I don't care about any of it. All I care about is the movie being good. If the movie's good, date, don't date, doesn't matter. People freak out over this Zendaya. Did you see what Zendaya was wearing on the, the red carpet? She looked so amazing. Please, she has a whole team of people making her look amazing. You think Zendaya, before she was a big star, anybody was like, have you seen what Zendaya's wearing? She was probably a barista at Starbucks, okay? I'm not hating on them. I like them both. I'm happy for them. I'm just saying people that give two shits about this stuff. Like, I didn't even want to talk about it, but, you know, I like Spider-Man. And Okay, guys, I'm secretly, I'm all about this, all right? I think their name, it was like Triss. I don't know what her last name is. It must be a combination somehow. But uh, Zendaya and Tom Holland. It's so funny. His name's Tom and hers is Zendaya. It's like such a normal, boring American name, Tom. And then this, like, exotic, cool name I've never heard of, Zendaya and Tom. Coming to the party and event tonight is Zendaya and Tommy. Yeah, Tommy's going to be there. <laughs> it's Tommy coming with his fancy girlfriend, Zendaya. You know, that's how, like, back where I come from in Queens, if I had a girlfriend named Zendaya, they'd be like, it's Tommy bringing Zendaya. Oh, Zendaya, she thinks she's fancy, huh? Became a big movie star dating a girl named Zendaya. He thinks he's better than us. I don't think I'm better than you, Aunt Carol. I think you think you're better than us with your hotshot girlfriend, Zendaya. What kind of name is that anyway? I don't know. What kind of name is freaking... What kind of name is Deborah? I don't know. Let's go to the next topic. Okay, so this one's kind of crazy. Um, Barbados just ended centuries of British rule, became its own country or thing. Uh, it ushered in a new era on Monday. Ending the Queen's 55-year role as head of state, becoming the world's new republic. Imagine that. They had a queen, and now they don't. They're like, yo, bitch, you ain't a queen. You ain't hot shit. <laughs> We're the new republic, baby. But, like, one of the first things they did was honor Rihanna with a National Hero Award. Imagine, like, being liberated. You know, we're no longer under your rule, king and queen. Let's give Rihanna, the singer, an award. I'm sure she's done a lot of good in the country. But it's just funny to me. It'd be like if I got out of prison and I was liberated and I'm like, I'm free. Also, I want to tell Eminem he's my hero. It's my first, first, uh, you know, thing I'm going to do. Okay, so Rihanna's the second woman in Barbados history to be given the honor of national hero after religious leader Sarah Ann Gill. So funny. It's like religious leader and really good singer. <laughs> We love your commitment to the Lord and Savior. And you've got great music. Again, she's probably done tons of good for the country, maybe given millions of dollars. I don't know, but that doesn't help my jokes. You know what I mean? I love you, Rihanna. So she's one of only two living Barbados national heroes. So it's Rihanna and then an 85-year-old cricketer, Sir Garfield. Imagine that. Like, is she, <laughs> she goes to Barbados to be in the VIP, and it's just her and an 85-year-old guy who used to play cricket. I was really good at hitting that ball. So, you know, me and you were, like, on the same level. I was really good at cricket, Rihanna. <laughs> so also at this event was the Prince of Wales. Imagine, like, introducing yourself to people. Hi, I'm the Prince of Wales. You can just call me Ned, though. It's my real name is Ned. Or you can go with Prince of Wales. That's what it says on my Instagram. They said to her, may you continue to shine like a diamond. They were like, wow, oh, that was so clever. When they were writing that, they're like, I'm going to tell her she can still shine like a diamond. Brilliant, brilliant. And this is the best part. So she's at this like prestigious event and ceremony, and she was braless. They note that in the article. I don't know. You think you're going to go get a ward from your country that just became a republic? You're going to wear a bra. I would think. I think it's it's a bra-worthy occasion. But Rihanna's like, nah, going braless. I'm a national hero. Hey. Bet the 85-year-old cricketer like that. 
So Barbados is now an independent state after removing the queen. And they also say the armed forces will be getting new buttons on their uniforms. And the island prison is no longer called Her Majesty's. Imagine they were using that term literally just a few months ago. If you were going to prison, be like, we're going to lock you up at Her Majesty's. What is this, Alice in Wonderland? Imagine being like, yeah, I got a uh, 20 to life. I got to get locked up at Her Majesty's. <laughs> Let me tell you, she's not so majestic now, is she? I love how like people in the army are like, do you hear we're getting new buttons? Is that true? Are we, re are we getting new buttons? Yeah, hearing the new buttons come tomorrow. You know, things are changing now. There's no more majesty. Yeah, we don't call her majesty anymore. I think now we just go, what's up, girl? I think she's just a girl now. And Rihanna's our, Rihanna's our hero. You think Rihanna's going to be at the button ceremony tomorrow? I don't think Rihanna's going to be there for our new buttons. Do you? Did somebody say something? I don't know. Maybe Rihanna's going to be there. They show up. It's just a but It's just the cricket guy. <laughs> He's like, I'm a national hero as well. Like, yeah, get out of here, cricket guy. Where's Rihanna? Is she braless again? All right, let's go to the next topic. Okay, this one's huge, okay? The first robots have been made that can, wait for it, reproduce. They're called xenobots. I mean, we have created robots that are living organisms that have the ability to reproduce. That with the iRobot that was trending the other day with that robot that I showed you guys. I mean, we're really like, this is crazy stuff. I mean, we are really moving into sci-fi movies that are becoming our reality. These microorganisms called xenobots can reproduce on their own. I mean, that's some scary stuff. That means a scientist could come back to his lab and there's like a small family there. <laughs> I mean, it's about time you got back. We've been waiting for you. We reproduced and this is who we are now. So these are microscopic organisms made from frog cells that apparently assemble babies in their Pac-Man-like mouths. I love that, like, even in the most cutting-edge scientific article to describe something, they're like, it's kind of like Pac-Man, explaining something that's never existed before. It's like, it's kind of like Pac-Man. <laughs> they're microorganisms. They self-reproduce. They're called xenobots. Kind of like Pac-Man. Wait, how do they make babies? Have you ever played Pac-Man? Um, but absolutely wild stuff, guys. They use frog stem cells. So who would have ever thought, you know, when I saw a frog, I'd be like, I wonder if it's going to eat a fly. But there's some kid out there that's like, you know, I think if we take its stem cells, we can make micro robots. Call them xenobots. They'll reproduce on their own. Basically do our laundry. All of this so that the robots can do our laundry. That's really what we're trying to get to, right? <laughs> we just don't want to do laundry. Don't want to do dishes anymore. The dishwasher's not cutting anymore. I got to load it. I got to unload it. I got to rinse we need xenobots, and we need them to clean our dishes and do our laundry. It's really what we're, all this fancy schmancy stuff. Really, we just don't want to do manual labor. So apparently, what they are trying to do with all this stuff is deliver drugs better or like a more efficient way to, to give drugs, which I don't really understand. Um, it's apparently a breakthrough for regenerative, regenerative, regenerative medicine. So scientists have created the first ever robots that can reproduce and somehow this is going to help humans get more drugs, which is that the answer? <laughs> I love how we've, we've created an army of robots to give us drugs. <laughs> the robots are like, yeah, yeah, what do you guys want? What do you guys want? More, uh... <laughs> they just want to like subdue the humans. When we look back in the history books, the humans created the robots to give them drugs and the robots gave them what they wanted. A sedated, a sedated public didn't even realize it was being replaced. Also, frogs, huh? They call them, okay, millimeter-sized living machines. I'm already worried about dead bugs and things like ticks, you know, bugs you can barely see. I don't need living... Imagine if a, a um, you know, a pest person, he like comes to your house to spray. You're like, so did you get the cockroaches? He's like, I did, but you also have xenobots. I'm sorry, what? Microscopic living robots that can reproduce. Yeah, they're all over your, your, they're all over your paneling and on the trim. I'm sorry, what's that? Yeah, you've got uh, basically the Terminator and Robocop multiplying everywhere in this apartment right now. Reading your thoughts, recording your behavior. It's only a matter of time. Can you spray for that? No, you're gonna die, we're all gonna die. Xenobots are neither a traditional robot nor a known species or animal, but a living programmable organism. A living programmable organism. They are made out of adapted stem shells from something called Xenopus lavis or lavis, which is an African species of frog. All right, 
save me the, the terms there, people, okay? It's a frog. Their shape has been designed by a computer to reproduce over multiple generations. How freaky is that? The computer's like making these things to last. But these things have been developed for intelligent drug delivery. So imagine, you know, instead of just popping a pill, you have a miniature robot deliver it to a specific part of your body. That's crazy. Do you need a surgeon? No, no. I think I'm gonna have this mechanical spider do this heart transplant for me. Crazy stuff, guys. Who would have ever known when you look at a frog that that frog could be the answer to curing Alzheimer's or replacing someone's arm who lost it in an explosion? Really crazy stuff. Xenobots, watch out. Pretty cool, pretty out there. And guys, that's our show for today. So thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, comment, all that fun stuff. And I will see you next time.